Our objective for today can solve and graph multi-step one variable equations involving absolute values. Tell your neighbor what concept we're still on, please. Okay, so I had mentioned work. It was our last lesson last time, but this one's really our last last lesson on one variable equations because I do. No, I did notice that on the home play last week, a lot of us had difficulty with a work problem, right? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and explain that more thoroughly. So before we get in there, just to make sure, uh, we already know what one variable equations are, yes? Yeah. We already know the steps, simplify, isolate, plot, check. I gave you steps for solving absolute values, and it was to isolate the absolute value, write two equations, and solve. Yes? Uh, from there, I gave you guys what absolute value was. We talked about the distance. We talked about equations. And we set up more equations. And then I give you some of these, so look up, please. You don't have to copy this. Writing utensils down, look up. Pay attention, please, because some of you are still getting confused with some of these. Here it goes. So writing utensils down, focus, please. Look up to the screen. So line down the equal sign. So I said, when we got to these, I said, wouldn't it be easier if we didn't have the two there? what to do from there, right? But now we have the 2. What is the 2 doing? So what is the inverse? Multiply times 2. Multiply times 2. We're left with 3 times the absolute value x plus 7 equals to 12. What is the 3 doing? It's multiplying. So what is the inverse? Divide by 3. Divide by 3. We end up with the absolute value x plus 7 equals to 4. Uh, do we have anything else outside the absolute value? No. So we write negative 4 and a positive 4. What's inside? x plus 7. x plus 7. So from there, minus 7 minus 7. x equals negative 11. Bless you. Minus 7 minus 7. x equals negative 3. Therefore, solution set negative 11 comma negative 3 and then our plot negative 3 negative 11 and this is what I needed to see including the work on Friday's part K right and by the way this this is one of the problems from the part K right yeah I don't know if you guys noticed but here it goes for those of you that haven't that are like all over the place let me focus your attention. The pop parties on Friday are straight from the warm-up and from the lesson. No, if you're messing around and not practicing, you're not going to do well on the pop party. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I don't know if you guys noticed that the problems that on the part take were exactly, almost exactly from the warm-up. Yes? Yeah. Yes. All right, so... From there, we covered um, equations equal to negatives, yes. We covered equations equal to zero. And then we summarized and we said, let's see if we remember. When an absolute value has two solutions, that means that the absolute value is equal to what? When we have two solutions, the absolute value is equal to what? A positive number. When we have one solution, the absolute value is equal to what? Zero, because there's only one zero. And then when the absolute value has no solution, then that means that it's equal to what? A negative, because there's no such thing as negative absolute value. Does that make sense? So here we go. So this is absolute value equal to a positive, absolute value equal to zero, an absolute value equal to a negative. Are we there? Yeah. So we summarize that, but then where I wanted to get to is this one. So copy that one, please, on your paper. Example 3A, you got one minute. It's going to go really fast. We don't have a lot of time. It says, Sydney Harbor Bridge is 134 meters tall. The height of the bridge can rise or fall by 180 millimeters because of the change in temperature. Write and solve an absolute value equation to find the minimum and maximum height of the bridge. Copy that. All right, here we go. It says, 
focus. Sydney Harbor Bridge is 134 meters tall, and the height of the bridge can rise and fall by 180 millimeters. Now check this out. The materials of bridges, they're made out of concrete and steel. Okay? Now, I don't know if you've seen videos when they melt steel, when they put heat to it, it becomes like, it looks like it's water, right? It's melted. So, question. Let's say here's our bridge. Write your utensils down, look up, please. From here to here, this height is 134 meters. Yes? However, if this bridge was here in Imperial Valley and it went, the temperature in the summer was 119 degrees, that means they're heating up the steel, right? So what's going to happen to this beam? It's going to get weak. That is correct. That means it's going to go like, like that. It's going to kind of like slouch down because of the metal getting hot. That is correct. However, that's in the summer. What if in the winter, there's some winters here in the valley that it's 34 degrees? Yeah. So what's going to happen to the steel when it gets that cold? It, it's going to harden, and it's going to harden so much that all of a sudden it starts bending up. So, it's, so yeah, so it starts doing this. Instead of doing this, it starts going upward like that. Like a slope up, yeah. Everybody see that? So now check this out. So pay attention, please, or you're going to miss it. So what are we saying? That up to here, it's a what? 134 meters. However, it can go upward how many millimeters? 180. Or downward how many millimeters? 180. What's another way that I can write, instead of putting an arrow up, what can I write here? A plus, and here, negative. Doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't that like like if I were saying negative 180, positive 180? Are we there? So check this out. So the only thing that you guys are missing is how to set it up in an absolute value. Let me show you. Write this down. Absolute value formula. And the formula goes as follows. Absolute value, you need a variable. I'm going to use right now the variable Q. And the minus. Then we're going to have a blank space. Blank. And then an absolute value. And then an equal sign. And then a blank. This is the formula for any absolute value word problem. Hold on, hold on. So now, does it have to be the same variable? No. It could be whatever variable applies to the, to the problem. In this case, they're talking about what? The height or meters or whatever they're talking about, so you would change the variable to that. However, do we not now know which one of these, look up please, which one of these, 134 or 180. Which one goes here? Talk it over your neighbor. Which one goes here? Daniel, B, what goes here? 180. Hands of you agree. That is correct. Why did we conclude that? Because we said that one is positive and the other one is negative. That is correct. Therefore, which one goes inside? 134. That is correct. So now, check this out. Can we solve that equation? No. Write any utensils down, look up. Let me tell you why we can't solve it. Look up, please. Look up, or you're going to miss it. What is the unit of measure for this one? And for this one? They're little... They're a little tricky in that from time to time, so you got to be careful. So that means that the last step, we need to convert one or the other into whatever the other one is, right? So watch. Let's leave it in meters. So that means I need to change this into millimeters, so I need to divide by 
100, which means moving the decimal two times to the left. So watch. One, two. Therefore, my new equation, let me make some space. My new equation is absolute value Q minus 134 equals to 1.80. And do we know how to solve that? Yes, copy that, please. Okay. Yes, Tanner. Um, because when you write the equations, what do you do with the negative 34 to leave Q by itself? Add. It becomes a positive 134, and that's the height. It's a, right. Yes, Andrew. Oh, no. That is a lot of different equations. That one has like three or four equations in one. Yeah. I'll t talk about that later. All right. Any questions with this? All right. So with that said, look up. Let me give you another situation. Writing utensils down. Look up. It says, a support beam for a building must be three and a half meters long. And here's a support beam. If you don't see it, writing utensils down. Look up. It's, you guys see it? There it is. That's the beam. Okay? So this beam has to be three and a half meters long. But according to city regulations, some cities allow that it could be, the, the, the beam can differ from the length in three millimeters, which, which is very little. What does that mean, differ? That it can be either longer or shorter. So with that information, this and this, write me an equation for this situation. Example 3B. Example 3B. Write me an equation for that. So, uh, first write it and then convert next. You got it, right? Okay. All right. Let's see. Skylar, give me the first equation before we convert. What would it be? Absolute value what? Okay. Uh, Pamela, help, help her out. Q minus 3.5 equals 3. Hands if you got it to right there. That is correct. Because which one becomes positive and negative? This one. Either can go longer three or minus three, right? But we got this, but are they the same measure? No. no. So we need to divide by 100 or move the decimal how many times? One, two. So my new equation is absolute value Q minus 3.5 equals to 0 0.03. Do we know what to do from there? One negative and... One positive, and that's how we get the length. Are we there? Okay, so right now I didn't want you to, to solve it because we already know how to solve I just wanted you to set it up. Okay, so that's one situation. Let me show you another situation. Pay attention to this one or you're going to miss it, please. Here it goes. So I was researching on, I Googled the weather for Imperial. Here it is. This is for today, Monday. Nine, uh, I Googled it at 9 a.m. But look what the weather would be. Um, yeah, the weather today. So it goes, it ranges from the lowest is 65 and the hottest is 90. So watch, check, check this out. If I was to ask you to write me an absolute value equation according to the situation, it's doable. What would be the first thing that we would write? We would write absolute value. Q minus blank equals blank. Are we there so far? So now, this is a different situation from the other ones because on this one, they don't tell us how much it differs. They just give us a minimum and a maximum. So let me show you how to find first. Look up. I'm going to find this number, the one inside. Look what I do. Look up. 90 plus 65. That gives me 155. 
However, since I added 2, I need to divide by 2, and that gives me 77.5. Hold on, hold on. That's how we find the number inside. However, how do we find the number outside? Well, we take the highest number and then we subtract this. Minus 77.5. That leaves us with 12.5. Hold on. Once again, they gave us a maximum and a minimum. What do we do? Add and then divide by that gives us the inside number. To get the outside, we get that subtract from the maximum. All right, let's see. I want you to do Wednesday. Wednesday, our minimum is 62 degrees, and our maximum is 92 degrees. I want you to write me an equation for that situation. Ready? Go. Should be almost done. Let me get you guys started. There you go. You're welcome. All right, let's see. What's your equation for this one? Alvaro. Hands, have you got that? That is correct. And that's how exactly the homework, uh, home play would be, what we did earlier and then this time. Yes? So make sure on your way out you get a home play, get a Saturday Academy slip, get that sign, and if you're not coming for Saturday Academy this Saturday, make sure they write a comment that uh, whatever, you're a Power Ranger, you can't attend or whatever. <laughs> a good one, guys. Enjoy your home play. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.